Niso propose that the Senate be given emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. Everybody in the Senate cheers for joy as if they had just heard the best news of their life. Mason Obi-Wan now stand looking at the sea of people in the high court of the Senate, cheering for a little known Gungan rescued from Naboo. Wow, I never thought that I'd see Jar Jar causing this much of a ruckus in the Senate. <laughs> what are the odds? Obi-Wan exclaimed. Mace takes a second to ponder Obi-Wan's comments. Yeah, what are the odds? Obi-Wan, could you do me a favor? Obi-Wan turns to Mace. Certainly, Master. Could you take a reading on Jar Jar's midichlorian count? Mace asks Obi-Wan. After this meeting, Obi-Wan bumps into Jar Jar accidentally on purpose and scratches him, taking a sample of his blood. Obi-Wan then takes the sample to run a test, and not long after, the results have come out. My word, Jar Jar, his midichlorian count, it's, it's off the chart. Whose midichlorian count? Anakin pops into the room after hearing the fact that he now had a competitor in the Jedi Temple. Have you ever wondered what it would have been like if Jar Jar had been trained by Anakin Skywalker? Well, if you have, then today you are in for a treat because that's exactly the scenario that we'll be exploring in today's video. This is What If Anakin Trained Jar Jar? After the Jedi see Jar Jar's power of persuasion in the Senate, they end up sneakily taking a midi-chlorian sample from him and are shocked when they see that his midi-chlorian samples are absolutely off the chart. In private, they say to themselves that they have to train this Jedi in the ways of the Force before somebody else got their hands on the seemingly innocuous Gungan. Even though they had traditions about how old Jedi were when they brought them to the temple, Jar Jar clearly had strong potential, stronger than anybody could have imagined. So the Jedi Council agrees that Binks must be trained. In addition, because of Jar Jar's high midichlorian count, and because the Jedi believe that Anakin needs a lesson in patience and learning how to listen to the will of the Force, they select a young Skywalker to be Jar Jar's master. Following the Battle of Christophersis, when Anakin returns to Coruscant for a briefing with the Jedi Council alongside Obi-Wan, the Council begins to tell him things that he is flabbergasted by. Anakin walks into the Jedi Chamber and he sees Jar Jar in the middle of the circle. He's confused as to why the Senate representative would pay a visit to the temple. He still greets Jar Jar though with a warm welcome, like seeing his childhood best friend pay him a visit at work. Mace then interrupts their small reunion. Anakin, this may come to a shock to you, but Jar Jar here has one of the highest midichlorian counts we've ever seen. Ha <laughs> yeah, sure, right Mace. I guess I've got some competition, eh? Anakin responds slightly cheekily. Anakin expects some sort of laughter as he cracked his slick one-liner, but it falls dead silent in the chambers. That's when he remembered that Mace Windu has no sense of humor. He does have a similar midichlorian count to you, Anakin, Obi-Wan states in total seriousness. Anakin is absolutely shocked by the news. No, no, it can't be. There must be an accident. It's Jar Jar, for goodness sakes. Anakin says, slightly annoyed. There are no accidents, Mace Windu replies. Jar Jar, still in the room, feels a little bit awkward seeing Skywalker's reaction. Misa be a little weird too, but uh, don't worry. Misa will make you feel welcome in the midichlorian Misa friend club. Jar Jar says, Oh goodness, I have a bad feeling about this. Anakin replies, Indeed, we do too. Mace takes his word seriously. He continues, It is shocking that there were so little signs of force abilities when we first met this Gungan. He should have been admitted when he was a youngling, and now he's behind on his training. Anakin frowns, trying to figure out what Windu is implying. Wait, you don't mean... Anakin replies as a light bulb goes off in his head. Since you have similar midichlorian count to Jaja, and we need to train him as quickly as possible, we are tasking you, Anakin, to fast track Jaja's training. Anakin shakes his head and falls on his knees in anguish. No! He screams, absolutely frustrated that he was the one chosen to be Jar Jar's master. Following the meeting, Anakin meets Jar Jar and tells him that they will begin his Jedi training in the morning. 
The next day, Jar Jar is prepped for his first day of actual training as a Padawan. He enters the training chambers, and he immediately is enamored by the facility and the tools used to train young Jedi. Jar Jar begins running across the room, geeking out over all of the artifacts inside, Jedi robes, used lightsabers, old training gear, and then he stumbles upon an ancient holocron passed down through generations and generations of Jedi, containing all of the secrets to the Force. Jar Jar is puzzled as to the inner workings of the contraption. The first thing he does is try and greet the hologram, which he whispers to. Hello, Misa name is Jar Jar. Behind him, a mysterious voice begins to speak, and it seems to emanate throughout the room as he whispers to this hologram. Did you enjoy the tour? Jar Jar is surprised, but he continues, excited that he's received a response. Misa do. It's Misa's first day of being a Jedi. Misa's a bit nervous, but Misa gonna do Misa best. Then I guess we'll have to see, the voice replied. Misa gonna show you the moves Misa learned today afterwards, Jar Jar says to the holocron. No need to do so, Jar Jar. I just request that you turn around. Jar Jar turns around and reveals that the mysterious voice is actually Anakin Skywalker who'd been standing there all along with a smile on his face. Okay then, uh, I guess we'll see- Ah! Master Annie! Jar Jar says. Jar Jar's shocked reaction causes him to tremble and drop the holocron on the floor, breaking the Ancient, which is unreplaceable, into pieces. Anakin stoically takes a look at the shattered holocron. On the outside, he's unfazed, but Inside, he's panicking, thinking to himself how he would explain the situation to Obi-Wan. In his head, Anakin begins an inner monologue of frustrated anxiety. Oh no, oh no, what am I gonna do? It's my first day of the Master and I'm already causing a mess, he thinks to himself. Anakin slowly turns to Jar Jar, showing him on the outside that he maintains his cool. Our training begins, Binks, and we will have one of our mechanics fix this, do not worry. But in his head, Anakin tells a different story. Oh, good save, Anakin. You're doing great. Little did Anakin know that Jar Jar, naturally because of his force inclination, could hear the entire conversation in his head. The next day, after Jar Jar had rested for the evening following his first day of Jedi training, Anakin and Jar Jar walk back into the training quarters of the temple. After some lousy prep on Jar Jar's end, with Anakin fixing his attire for an entire 30 minutes because he screwed up putting on the Jedi robes, Anakin starts his lecture about being a Jedi. So, you want to be a Jedi, Jar Jar? Anakin begins. Misa thinks so? Wrong! Anakin interjects. You need to be a Jedi. With your talent, you owe the galaxy a duty to protect the ones that need us most. You are currently in no position to do so. I will train you ten times harder than you expect simply for that reason alone. Anakin ignites his saber. He starts swinging his sword around at Jar Jar, trying to attack while also trying to avoid hurting him. He pulls out the fancy Annie Obi spin which we see used in Revenge of the Sith, impressing Jar Jar and causing his Gungan eyes to go wide. You have no skills, you're clumsy, no strategic sense at all, it baffles me why Boss Nass made you the bombad general back on Naboo, and worst of all, I can tell that you forgot to brush your teeth this morning. Anakin starts. Hey, Jar Jar replies, looking a little bit abashed at these comments. Jar Jar attempts to attack Anakin for those comments, but Anakin deflects the attacks of his training saber and pins Jar Jar to the floor. It's over, Jar Jar. I have the high ground, Anakin says, smiling. He points his lightsaber towards the Gungan. Oh no, sir, Jar Jar replies. Lesson one, Binks. Never, ever let your enemy have the high ground. You know what happens after a Jedi lets their enemy have the high ground? Jar Jar frantically shakes his head. Let's say the battle is far more pleasant than the cleanup following, Anakin says. He shows some mercy and turns off his lightsaber. Again, Anakin starts. Throughout the day, Anakin just drills the same move over and over again. It's good that the council had given him a training saber, because Jar Jar burns himself many times. Anakin says that they'll end the day meditating, but Binks still can't sit still. We will continue our training tomorrow morning, Anakin says when they had finished. Did Miso do well? Jar Jar asks. 
Anakin looks at Jar Jar. You know what, Binks? For your second day, I think you did pretty good. But in his head, he utters something different. For Gungan with two left feet, Anakin thinks. Jar Jar's excitement is brought down as he could hear Anakin's internal voice. That night, Anakin goes over to Padme's apartment, hoping to finally get some rest and cool off. Padme looks at the disheveled Anakin and asks how his new Padawan is. Padme, Jar Jar is probably the worst Padawan I've ever seen. He starts. Oh, I think it's just his second day of training, that's all. Padme replies, trying to calm him down. He almost cut off my arm during training, Anakin replies. Well, that's good. Isn't that what you Jedi do with your lightsabers? Padme replies. We were meditating, Anakin interjects. Oh, wow, that is bad, Padme says. Anakin is frustrated even thinking about the day. He jumps onto the couch looking defeated and just wanting to lie down. Padme walks towards him. I tried everything I could, Padme. I did lightsaber training combat. Just like how you were trained, Padme replies. Yes, and we did force training, Anakin continues. Like how you were trained? Padme says again. Exactly, and at the end of the day, we meditated so that the Gungan could calm down, and he didn't. Padme finally says, just like how you were trained. Yeah, but... It takes Anakin a second, but then he understands. Oh. I see what you mean, Padme. You can't teach Jar Jar just like you were trained. Everybody is made differently. You have to adapt, Padme says. She goes to a pot of plants and begins watering it. This plant requires a lot of water to grow, Anakin. But if I put the same amount of water that I give to the cactus on the table, this plant's going to die, she explains. Anakin takes some time to think, stroking his chin. Jar Jar is not like other Jedi's, Anakin. He's not the most physical, nor did he participate in many battles. But what he has is heart, the true quality of a Jedi in my mind. He has a brain that understands others. Remember, Anakin, believe in him for me, Anakin, she says. Anakin takes that to heart, and the next morning, he carries Padme's words into the training session. The next morning, as Jar Jar and Anakin are meditating to start off their day, Anakin starts to have thoughts about Padme's death. The nightmares are returning, and now they're creeping into his meditation patterns as well. Anakin stumbles out of his meditative state and springs to his feet. His heart is racing, his breaths are shallow. Anakin tries to take a breather and recenter himself. Jar Jar quickly fetches from water for his master, sensing his discomfort. No, 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 Jar Jar, you don't need to focus on me. You need to focus on your meditation. Anakin says, panting. No, uh, Misa couldn't focus also, Jar Jar replies. That's why you need to practice more, my Padawan, Anakin says. No, you still don't understand, Master. Misa be seeing Padme in pain, and Misa sad. Misa be seeing what's in your head, Mr. Annie. Well, no, go wait. What? You see it too? Anakin says. Yes, Misa see it in you, sub brain. Jar Jar, that is amazing. I've, I've never heard of any Jedi sensing the vision of somebody else before, are you? Oh. Anakin trails off, and he comes up with an idea. In that moment, he has an epiphany. Come with me, Jar Jar, Anakin says. Anakin grabs Jar Jar by the wrist and leads him towards a spaceship nearby. Where am I still going, Master Annie? Anakin smiles playfully at his apprentice. Little Master Pado on a field trip, he says. Anakin takes Jar Jar to a distant planet that thrives with vegetation. The scenery is serene. The flowing waters around them makes Jar Jar feel at home. And there's a clear, gentle mist over top of the islands below. Here we are, Anakin says. Ah, yes, me be needing a vacation after the first day of training. Jar Jar chuckles. Anakin lets out an amused laugh. Oh no, Jar Jar, we are not here for vacation. As the ship slowly descends to the surface, the mist begins to dissolve, and a large, majestic temple is revealed. Welcome to the old Jedi Temple of Tython, Jar Jar. The Gungan's eyes go wide as he stares at the ancient ruins below. Not even the ancient city of the Gungans can compare to the majesty and power that emanates from the old temple below him. 
Wow, Jar Jar says. The light side nexus of Tython swirls around Jar Jar as he enters the temple with Anakin. When Jar Jar steps in, he hears everything. Every single thought, everyone's intentions, and he hears the birds, the trees, the earth, and the hum of the universe even. He experiences perfect serenity for one simple moment, sensing everything. And then, out of nowhere, he hears, Yeah! Anakin strikes with the same move that he did on the first day that he had trained Jar Jar. But this time, Jar Jar hears the attack loud and clear. He rolls out of the way, dodging Anakin's ferocious attack. Jar Jar looks at his hand. Look, Animisa! Anakin hits him with a second consecutive blow, knocking the Gungan off balance. Huh, you learned your lesson there, Binks. Never get distracted by the enemy. Now, the real training begins. Jar Jar squeals with delight, even though he had just been attacked by his master. Yes, master, he says. Jar Jar and Anakin train on Tython, day in and day out, for weeks on end. Anakin now understands what Padme had meant. He focuses on Jar Jar's strengths for him to become more confident in his skills rather than what the Gungan was weak in. Jar Jar's skills drastically improve, and his ability to see visions into the future comes to fruition. He's able to predict and resolve every one of his opponent's moves. Not long after, Jar Jar starts his lightsaber training. Even with his usual clumsy self, he's able to master the Ataru form. Anakin learns that Jar Jar is not naturally clumsy, that he just likes to do complex moves, which the form allows Jar Jar to push his limits with. Sure enough, as Anakin appreciates his time with his Padawan, he sees that Jar Jar is flourishing. When they return to Coruscant, he practices frequently with Ahsoka, who's made Obi-Wan's Padawan in this timeline. Together, Anakin and Obi-Wan develop more of a brotherly bond as they see their Padawans grow together, discussing how proud they both are, especially of Jar Jar. Obi-Wan remarks that at least Anakin hadn't been that bad, which prompts a chuckle from the young Jedi Knight. Eventually, Binks must go to Ilum to find his crystal and create his saber. He does so with a group of younglings, and they think he's extremely silly. He returns with a powerful green blade, and Anakin nods approvingly. He's proud of his Gungan apprentice. Once Jar Jar has his lightsaber, Anakin actually trusts him enough to go on a mission with him. Their first one together is a task that is especially close to Jar Jar's heart. They're tasked with defusing a tense situation on Naboo during the Clone Wars. Boss Leone had been acting strangely, and he had been offering support of the Gungan Grand Army to the Confederacy of Independent Systems in a planned invasion of Theed. Because Anakin and Binks are both force sensitive, they quickly foil this plot from Dooku which involves Rish Lu controlling him via a force amulet. They get this done very quickly, and Tarples assumes temporary control of the Council of Bosses. Anakin and Jar Jar end up dueling and defeating General Grievous out on the plains together. Rather than Tarples dying while fighting him, the two Jedi subdue Grievous together, capturing him. There is no need for Anakin to go after Dooku in this timeline because he has Jar Jar to remind him that that would be a rash decision and that now they had Grievous, which would be a critical loss to the Separatist cause. Grievous is sent to Coruscant to stand trial for his crimes and Dooku decides that without him, an attack on Theed would be pointless. Their cooperation displays a better bond between Anakin and Jar Jar, along with patience both ways in their relationship. Without Grievous, battles with the Confederacy become far more desperate. The Separatists are tired of Republic tyranny, and without their commander, they start going ham. The Office of the Chancellor specially requests Anakin and Jar Jar to serve as Jedi escorts for Palpatine amidst reports that an attempt on his life may take place from clone commandos who had been operating deep undercover in the heart of Separatist space. Palpatine uses this opportunity to manipulate Anakin and Jar Jar both. Because of Jar Jar's solid empathetic force powers, he can sense that something is off with the Chancellor, something that most of the other Jedi have not been able to. I appreciate your service to me as your Chancellor. It's a shame that the Jedi Council doesn't see your talent like I do, Anakin. Don't you wonder why they won't make you a master? Palpatine starts. I wonder, Anakin replies. It's at this point that Jar Jar starts to sense a disturbance emanating from Palpatine. Master Annie will become a bombad master in the future. Misa be knowing it, Jar Jar says excitedly. Oh, Jar Jar, the Jedi work in mysterious ways. They hide a lot more than you can learn. Palpatine replies. 
Charger steps back and starts wondering what Palpatine is talking about. For a man who speaks highly of the Jedi Order, he certainly seemed to have a lot of disrespect for their ways. The Force is not just about what the Jedi reach, it is the dark side and everything in between. How could anyone call themselves a master without understanding all facets of the Force? To become a complete and wise leader, you must embrace a larger view of the Force, Palpatine says, looking at Anakin. You mean, you understand the dark side of the Force? Anakin replies, Indeed, only through me can you achieve greater power than any Jedi. Learn to know the dark side and you'll be able to save your wife. I remember your dreams, Anakin. I remember you confiding in me. I can teach you how to save her. Jar Jar senses evil intent coming from Palpatine. Oh no, Sam, you should be having a bad feeling about this. What did you say? Anakin shoots a glance at Jar Jar. Use my knowledge, I beg you, Anakin. Jar Jar puts his hand on his lightsaber, ready to lunge at Palpatine at any moment. However, Anakin notices, and he halts his apprentice. If you'll excuse me for a moment, Chancellor, I need a moment with my Padawan, he says. Yes, go ahead, Palpatine says. Anakin takes Jar Jar into the hallway outside of the office. What the ferret, Jar Jar, he exclaims. Jar Jar looks at Anakin confused. You're embarrassing me in front of the Chancellor. Misa could sense that Mr. Sheev being up to no good. Misa thinking that the Chancellor is a Sith. You be careful with your accusations, Jar Jar. He is the Chancellor, and this is a very dangerous path to travel down. Accusing him without any proof? Misa knows it, Misa can sense it, and Misa just be telling you that Misa know the dark side. Jar Jar says, Yeah, that's, that's not good enough proof, Jar Jar. He didn't tell me that he was a Sith, just that he knew about the dark side of the Force. That could mean anything. You should stay in your lane, Jar Jar, and get this job done and over with, okay? I know that you start defending Palpatine because you start thinking that Issa could help Padme. Misa can feel it, Master. Misa be sensing you saw visions, but Issa can't. Issa manipulating you start to join the dark side. How dare you insinuate something like that about Palpatine? Anakin replies. You've known him for longer than I have, Jar Jar. You know that he's a good man. He's been a father figure to me for years. Jar Jar holds his saber, ready for a full-on fight with Anakin in order to stop him from seeing Palpatine. We'll settle this later, Jar Jar. This is not where we should handle this. I know that I'm often quick to use a sword, but not with you, Jar Jar. I can see that lightsaber in your head. Think. Use your head. I know that you have one now, even if it doesn't seem like it sometimes. Anakin then pauses, takes a deep breath, and starts again. Jar Jar, we'll get more information on this. And if you're correct, then we'll report it to the council. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. As Anakin walks to escort Palpatine, turning away from his apprentice, Palpatine glances back at Jar Jar menacingly. He knows that Jar Jar suspects him of being a Sith, and he begins to plot measures for the inevitable encounter between the Gungan and the Sith Master. Jar Jar knows that the Chancellor isn't the benevolent man that everyone believes him to be. The Gungan knows in his heart that he's correct. He also knows that the Jedi aren't meant to feel emotions, but he can't help but feel hurt that Anakin hadn't trusted him and had kind of exploded at him like that. After all, Anakin was his master. They were supposed to have a special bond of trust. At the very least, Anakin should have acknowledged his senses rather than simply dismissing them. So, being the rash Gungan that he is, Jar Jar sets out to prove that Palpatine is evil on his own. He goes to confront Palpatine by himself, ready for whatever judgment may come his way. The Force would guide him, and Jar Jar has faith in its direction. Jar Jar walks towards Palpatine's office, and he requests an audience with him. Misa no one that Misa no having an appointment, but uh, Misa open a chat, the Gungan says when he arrives. Ah, Jar Jar, come in. I always have time for an old friend, especially one from my home planet. Please, sit down. Can I offer you a cup of some Bantha Brew tea? The Chancellor asks Jar Jar as he stumbles into his office. Ooh, Misa loving some Bantha tea, Jar Jar replies. As Palpatine tries to make some tea for Jar Jar, he senses that Banks is feeling less jovial than usual. Is something troubling you, my old friend? Palpatine asks. Jar Jar doesn't hesitate. He's blunt, as usual. Mr. Sheev, Misa be getting some bomb bad senses about Yusa. Misa no liking how Yusa be talking to Annie, Jar Jar says. Palpatine cocks his head as the kettle finishes boiling. 
Oh, why is that? He asks, pouring Jar Jar his cup. Used to be filling his head with lies. Used to be making him feel muy muy bombad, and he's a thinking that he the best. He's a good, but used to making him think that he's a the best Jedi in the order. Jar Jar explains. Palpatine passes Jar Jar his cup of tea, which the Gungan burns his tongue on. Yusa also talking about his wife, and Yusa telling him that Yusa being able to save her, that Yusa know the tricks of the dark side, Misa thinking that Yusa in some big doo doo. Mr. Sheev, if Misa being honest, Misa thinking that Misa skills being the feeling and the brain, Misa knowing that the bad guys feel like, and Misa be getting the same senses from Yusa. Jar Jar takes a sip of his tea which the Gungan burns his tongue on, and exclaims, Be careful, Jaja. The tea is hot. Palpatine warns, smirking. He then narrows his eyes, sipping his own cup of Bantha Brew tea. Are you accusing me of something, Jaja? He inquires. Jaja ignites his lightsaber. Me sabi thinking that you such a big Sith Lord that the Jedi have been looking for. Me sa feeling it. Me sa seeing into you sa soul. Palpatine smiles evilly at the Gungan. He believes that Jar Jar will be a quick kill. He could easily hide the body and claim that it was an accident if he slaughtered him in cold blood. Binks was a klutz, surely nobody would believe that the Chancellor had murdered him. Perhaps Skywalker would be easier to manipulate with Binks gone as well. He gently places his cup of tea on the desk. So, Jar Jar, it's treason then, Palpatine states. Jar Jar remains firm in his position. Fearless. Palpatine admires his courage for a moment before delighting in the prospect of killing this annoying Gungan. You say in big doo doo this time, Mr. Sheev, Jar Jar says. During this battle, Anakin can sense that his apprentice is in trouble. He immediately feels his gut drop and he knows exactly where Jar Jar had gone. Anakin, believing that Jar Jar had done something rash and gone to speak with the Chancellor, sprints to the nearest speeder and speeds off to the Senate building. He uses force speed to get to the Chancellor's office when he arrives. When he opens the door, he sees that Jar Jar and Sidious are engaged in an incredible duel. Jar Jar is slipping over chairs and tables to avoid the blows of Sidious, and he's also landing some of his own strikes. Anakin's heart begins to thump as he seals the whirlwind of red and green, wondering what to do next. Jar Jar! Anakin cries. In that moment, Anakin realizes that Jar Jar had been right the entire time, and he joins in to protect him. Palpatine's red blade told Anakin the entire story. Anakin attempts to land strike after strike on Palpatine, but to no avail. Anakin, I can save your wife. I can help you become more powerful than the other Jedi, just like you deserve. They're holding you back. Can't you see it? I only want to help you, Anakin. Your apprentice is jealous. Palpatine gasps while the two Jedi try to overwhelm him with force. Your tricks won't work on me this time, Chancellor. I trust my apprentice. He's seen into the depths of my soul with his abilities. Surely he can see yours as well. Never underestimate a Gungan. Anakin retorts, thrusting his saber towards Palpatine with a jab. The battle continues for a very long time. Eventually, Palpatine grows tired of their games. He attempts to shock them with a swarm of force lightning, but the pair manage to block it with their sabers. They force it back towards the Dark Lord, causing Sidious to shrivel up, much like in Revenge of the Sith. However, he is far too engrossed in his hatred to sense his immortal pain. The unlimited power coursing through his veins was sucking him dry, and the Jedi are able to sustain their own. Eventually, Sidious's face turns to ash with all of the power being sucked from his body, and he falls to the floor as a mere skeleton. Jar Jar and Anakin look at the Chancellor's deceased body, huffing from their effort. We have to contact the Council immediately, Anakin says somberly. Mace Windu arrives at the scene, and he's informed what has transpired. He tells the pair that they have done well and that they deserve some rest at the temple. Mace momentarily seizes control of the Senate before giving it back to Mas Amida, informing him of what had transpired. Amida is given emergency powers to bring the war to an end, which is much easier now that Dooku doesn't have Palpatine helping him due to the fact that Grievous is also captured. A peace treaty is reached between the two factions, and tensions once again settle down. Dooku becomes the head of state for the new confederacy, and he retains amicable ties with the Republic following their secession. He simply wanted peace. At this point, at the end of our story, Jar Jar is made a knight due to his actions in the war with Anakin, along with his steadfast dedication to his master's well-being. 
At the end, Anakin apologizes to Jar Jar for not believing him about Palpatine and failing to see the red flags. Jar Jar is extremely forgiving. Misa understand. Misa know that Mr. Palpatine was uh, used a dad for a while. Misa getting it. Misa loving my dad too, Jar Jar says. Anakin laughs and he pats his apprentice on the shoulder endearingly. Jar Jar tells Anakin that he understands, and he also says that he knows Anakin had good intentions and just wanted to save Padme. Anakin doesn't leave the order in this timeline, but his mind is just a mess. He becomes a wayseeker, knowing that he needs to find himself in the Force. He still disagrees with a significant amount of Jedi dogma, and he wants to find his own perspectives on how to handle the Force, especially as the Chosen One who had just ended the line of Sith Lords. He has children to raise as well. So he goes his own way and lives with Padme on Naboo. He trains the kids and begins their upbringing, becoming a good father figure to them. He wanted them to see all aspects of the Force, not just the light. And he wanted them to see that the Jedi weren't necessarily correct on everything. He wanted them to grow up with good hearts, and he wanted his kids to fight for the galaxy. Padme is on 100% the same page, and she believes that the kids will change the future of the Republic years to come. The galaxy settles down and peace occurs. The Jedi Order is preserved, and the clones remain an integral part of the defense strategy when Amida is re-elected to be Chancellor for another term. The Republic is at peace. The Separatists have their own little government going, and the clones still have a purpose. Anakin is a father, learning to find his way in the Force in a break from the Order, and Jar Jar becomes a very respected hero of the Jedi. His name sounds throughout the galaxy, not as somebody who had brought about the end of the Republic, but as a man who had restored democracy to the galaxy. Jar Jar Binks is a hero of the Republic. Now's the time where we transition into the ask me anything period of our videos. So today's question comes from White Death Studios in the Discord server, and he asked what your favorite alien species is from Star Wars. Well, if it's not obvious from some of my previous videos and from this one today, I am a huge Gungan fan. I've always thought that they were ridiculous, and I know that there are more people who are just scared to admit that they secretly love the Gungans. I love Boss Nass, I love Jar Jar, I love Captain Tarples, I love Boss Leone, their entire culture is just so goofy and ridiculous to me, and as a kid, I always thought that Jar Jar was hilarious. Like, that's who he's intended for. He's intended to make children laugh, and that just made me love his entire species. I also just am such a huge fan of Boss Nass going all the time, and I could do it louder, but I'm not going to because the walls in my dorm room are paper thin, and I have a feeling that somebody around here would look at me questioningly if I walked into the hallway after making the Boss Nass sounds. So I love the Gungans, I love Jar Jar, and Boss Nass is my favorite one of the Gungans. I even <laughs> jokingly made a fictional religion centered around him for my little writing universe that I have on the side because I like to write and so I created an entire religion based off of Boss Nass for that universe. I mean obviously I changed a few things but <laughs> Boss Nass is the inspiration and it's just so ridiculous. But yes, long story short, Gungans are my favorite alien species. Thank you for the question, White Death Studios. If you would like to see your questions featured in our videos, I would highly recommend that you join the Discord and interact with the wonderful community that has centered around this Banthus 2 project. It's great to interact with every single one of you guys, and I am so happy that all of you have joined the Discord. If you enjoyed today's video, I would highly recommend also checking out this other video that will be put on the screen shortly. You guys are all fantastic, and I am so grateful for your support in watching this the entire way through. I hope that each and every one of you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and as always, I hope that you've had your daily delicious dose of Bantha Stew.